Big project today. This is the final push on getting the pond sealed. Yeah, we're starting with the bentonite on the sides. We've already done it on the bottom, but today we're working on the sides. Let's get started. If you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe. Thank you. We've got rain all around us. Uh, rain's in the forecast, but not much. So we might be able to pull this off before the rain, and that's our hope. We've done a little experimentation, a little trying to practice here uh, to figure out how to tackle the spreading of the bentonite. What we've done so far is dump over the edges with a bucket and you can see where the mini X is. We've used our new tiller and tilled some of that in. Now you might be able to see the mats in the bottom of the pond. Well, you might not be able to see the mats. I've already driven over them and mashed them in and you can tell they really aren't doing a whole lot of good. We rented those mats from local rental house. Uh, I think they're 10 or $15 each, four by eight sheets. They may be holding me up some. They, they probably are holding me up some, but it's, not a whole lot. So we're starting at the top right now and we're gonna we're gonna till this in now and then we'll head down to the bottom and get in the mud. As I walk around here I'm pretty happy with the spreading job that we've done so far questioning how I'm gonna do it at the bottom. Hey this tiller is a 40 inch tiller. Some places they said 46, some places they said 40. If I measure from the end of each tine it's 40 inches. The entire uh, encasement is about 45 inches, so I do not know the uh, power required or the flow required for the pump or the motor. If you missed that last episode, we paid $325 plus an enormous amount of shipping, plus two, $229 for the ears and steel that I welded together to get it mounted on this excavator. So what, a little over $1,000 I've gotten this teller working like a champ for this. I'm doing just one trip, one pass up through here. Now when I'm pulling upward, um, it works It works like I like it to. It's keeping the dirt up here. It's, it's trying to bring the dirt upward with me. Um, when I'm pulling downward, it, it just seems to pull the dirt off the, the side of the pond, which is not what I'm after. So I've got to figure out how to solve that. Yeah, I'm really happy with how we're getting the bentonite spread up here. Uh, so that, that part I'm, I feel good about. We'll come up with something on the bottom. Oh, there he is right in front of the tiller. Let me just let's see if I can till you, drone. <laughs> Back off a little, Tim, so it'll... Once, it, once in a while it stops if it gets in a bind. I'm really happy with how this is mixing in. I, I think this is, this is doing great. Okay, we've got a lot of questions about how much uh, we've spent on the pond. So let me just say overall, until the bentonite, not very much. Mainly just fuel before the bentonite. But once we decided to do this bentonite project, it has significantly increased, right? Go to naturalwaterscapes.com slash TTWT and you'll see details on, on exactly what we've done on this pond, but, but you'll see the, the latest bentonite prices and they vary a lot depending on uh, how much you buy and where you're located because a lot of the cost is shipping can't remember exactly, but uh, we got a little bit of a break on our bentonite because of our partnership with Natural, Natural Waterscapes, but I believe the retail price uh, for what we bought uh, delivered to our house is somewhere around $14,000. So that's a, a, a big investment. Quite frankly, we see a lot of ponds around here, and I don't know of any pond that holds water to the brim. If we're going to have a pond, I mean the way Christy and I think, if we're if we're going to have one, it's going to be it's going to be nice. The property values in this neighborhood are are high, and they will be, we believe. I mean, economic issues aside, they're going to be going up because we're close enough to Indianapolis and close enough to a lot of new coming industry that we think. Um, you know, it's it's worth investing in a 
in a property like this. Now the folks at Natural Waterscapes have, again I mentioned the TTWT page there, naturalwaterscapes.com slash TTWT. Um, they've added uh, some more content to that page. Um, there was some questions about how they did our soil survey, how they got it from the county. So they've provided a video now on how to to get that information. I think that's incredibly fascinating. So go to naturalwaterscapes.com slash TTWT and check out that and other information. We've got some uh, other questions that we're hoping to get answered and answered via that page. Uh, probably one of the biggest questions may already be there by, by the time you're watching, um, but we would like to get a, a good explanation from them on why having a spring at the bottom of your pond is not necessarily a good thing. In other words, it may turn into a leak once all the water pressure is on top of it. So we'd like to have them to help us describe that in a way that, that everyone can understand. Back to the cost. So if you consider 14,000 for the bentonite, um, a little over a thousand dollars for the tiller, I think we have probably 200 gallons of fuel in it um, at this point, maybe a little bit more, but not much more if, if, if any. I spent maybe 150 or 200 dollars on the sump pump that I did here. Now I don't know if I want to count that irrigation system that I used to pump the pond originally. Does that count as part of the pond or not? I don't know. But it was expensive. I paid close to $2,500 for that thing, maybe more, especially after I got the uh, hoses. I, I think I made a mistake there. I, I chose the 4-inch version and that was significantly more costly than a 3-inch, especially when you start buying accessories uh, like the extension hoses and everything. So I would recommend anybody else buying a trash pump. If, if you think you can get by with a 3-inch, use a 3-inch. It's just so much more readily available. I want to leave a little strip there so I know how far I've gotten. Well, once we've got the right tool for the job, I don't think it could be easier to mix this stuff in, right? This has been, this has been great. Okay, let's see if we can change attachments now and pack some of this down. We're going to pack it a while because we're nervous about the rain, right? So anything we've already got mixed in and completed, we want to try to get compacted so that so that that portion is relatively finished. I ran this tiller about five minutes before I got the hoses all wrapped up in the tines. Thankfully it's a hydraulic tiller so it wasn't strong enough to tear these hoses up. But the reminder for all of you is double check your hoses, make sure that you've got straps, whatever it takes to keep them out of the way. I've, I've torn up more hoses by getting them dragged and it caught in a mower or, or in this case caught in a tiller uh, just because of poor management. Got to start carrying a hammer in my mini X. Now first I had a 21 gallon per minute pump and Rammer chose to replace that with a 12 gallon per minute pump and I think that's a better fit for my machine. I'm able to actually uh, pick up and move my boom a little bit while it's still uh, running and I like that a lot better. With other attachments, say a mulcher or even the tiller, the the flow of the pump makes a huge difference. In my discussion with the engineers at Rammer, they said it doesn't. They said that all the work is done by the the weight of the of the hammer here, and and it, it doesn't really matter how much flow they put in this pump. So they're saying that the 12 gallon per minute pump is going to be just as good, going to compact just as hard as the 21. So I think the moral of the story is if you're interested in one of these compactors, I would say get the size smaller motor than what your flow recommends. So I have a 17 gallon per minute flow total to my implement and this 12 gallon per minute pump he says is going to do just as good as the 21 on my machine. It's certainly compacting, we can tell that. 
Okay, so I started at the bottom of the first time, and then I don't think that was the right approach, at least for looks. So I'm going to start at the top for the next pass. Now, I finally did read the manual about optimal technique. Well, there's four big rubber gaskets on this, I don't know, gaskets, bushings, I don't know what they're called. can't remember the terminology they use. But these big rubber pieces that separate the frame from the actual compaction unit. And so what the book says is to push down hard enough with the excavator here to displace them up to 50%. That way I'm putting enough downward force on to do the job. I'm glad I read that because I thought putting that much force on it was, would damage the machine. But no, that's what you need to do. So I'm really like right there. See, I'm really putting a lot of force on it. I borrowed this compactor from rammer.com. I found it hard to, to rent a, a compactor that would fit my excavator. Um, the local Kubota dealers so far do not rent attachments, although one of them was quite interested. And the competitive dealers don't have a mount or you know, don't have any way to, to help me out as far as matching the mount. So when people just say, go rent an attachment, that may not work with excavators. I mean, uh, a lot of places would rent the excavator with the attachment, but as far as renting the attachment by itself to fit your excavator, uh, not so much. Now starting about here, the bentonite only goes about as far as the tamper here from the top. We went to the bottom of the pond and did a little bit, but we stopped basically where we are now. So from here on, I won't really need to reach as far. Can you feel the shake, Christy? Yeah, I can feel the shake. There's a good angle of displacing those rubber mounts. When I push it down, I can displace them, see? It feels like a different machine with this uh, smaller flow pump, and for the better, because I'm, a I'm able to pick up and move the arm, the boom, the stick, whatever, even the tracks without uh, losing the momentum of the compactor, whereas I couldn't do that with the 21 GPM pump. So this is definitely a better fit for my excavator. There was some discussion with Rammer as to whether the 700 pound would be better than the 1,000 pound, but I think the 1,000 is great. I'm, I'm able to reach to full extension without you know, feeling tipsy or anything, so I think it's, I think the 1000's working great. So I have limited space here, and I, once we get that uh, bag open, we kind of have to leave that in the same spot. You'll see that in a second. We learned that on our first bag. So I'll get this machine up and out of here, and then we'll get on with the distribution of the next bag. As you can see, I broke one of the straps on this bag coming in. Uh, it's pretty steep, and I got tipsy and yeah, that's where we went. I don't have any straps to spare. Try to get this bag positioned in a good spot for loading and then we'll just put the tractor in park and hopefully it won't be a, a challenge. Oh yeah, the tractor's gonna be in a pretty good spot. Okay, so hopefully you can see that bag and loader right there at the bottom of the bag. We bought that on Amazon for about $135 plus, I don't know if shipping was included or not, but it's El Cheapo. I'll tell you that. So here we go, and it'll poke a hole in that bag, and I need to go fairly rapidly, but I went so fast on the last one that I think I ripped the bag up more than necessary. So maybe that will be a better speed right there. Come on, baby. Now it should come down. Yeah, we're gonna get it going here. Now, even though we had trouble getting it started, you'll see as we go along that we have trouble sometimes getting it stopped. Those levers, when they come together, they still leave a crack between the two halves. It, it, it just doesn't do a great job. Now, I've got four of these mats in here. I, I don't know that they're doing any good. My loader won't go up. Well, there it goes.
loader won't blow up again. I bet it can't get any oil in the valve. Yeah. At this steep of an angle. Get a little less steep, and then it starts to go up. That's interesting. So I learned something. When I'm that steep, the loader won't go up. Can't get any oil in the hydraulic pump. So I'll start with the loader up this time. Now the reason it can go down is because it doesn't have to add any oil. Gravity's bringing it down. Now there's interesting. I also, the hydrostatic doesn't work. I wonder if I'm needing to add some hydraulic fluid. Well, based on this, I believe the mats may be helping. This is how I do my hydraulic fluid. I use a McNaught battery operated pump. These must be becoming more popular. I saw them for sale at a local 21st century dealer there in Colorado. And you can get them for five gallon cans. You can get them for 55 gallon. The, the beauty is there's very little cleaning. Let me show you how kind of how this works. The pump never gets oil in it. I, I forget what they call this. You can buy these separately. So if you want to use motor oil and hydraulic fluid or whatever in the same with the same pump, you can do so. They may call them a stem, I don't know. And uh, yeah, and the same pump will work on different size. So I, I've got a uh, gauge here showing how much I've dispensed. Come on, baby. Now I'm not wanting bucket full here. I, it's, it's light stuff, I just want to be a little more, I just want to be more patient with the spreading of it. Have I shown you the texture? It's just a powder. When I did the first six in the bottom, I spread them with this tractor, and I had the power rake then to, to finish the final spreading. Well, I, I don't think I can get the power rake to operate up there on these sides. Come on, lift. I added plenty of oil. Those mats are definitely helping. I was wondering at first because I saw so much mud, but no question now. That wind comes right up through toward my face, bringing all this bentonite with it. Ugh. I think the camera ladies found a better spot. Yep, for once. I don't know, some of it comes down here too. So we decided to take this last bag and just dump it out on the ground. The unloader was a nifty concept, but it was taking way too much time. Now I'm getting dusted. Woo. Maybe the camera lady is downwind. Yeah. I thought we had her position better. Maybe if I dump the next bag here too, then we won't have as much waste. And I won't have to clean this perfectly up every time. Oops, a little too deep. I like to even it out across the bucket a little bit. Truth is, I love playing in it when it's dry. But I went in and washed up a little while ago and I got, it got slimy all over me. It was nasty. Getting that dirt up in there is making it not dump as smoothly. Go way under there and cut a long ways. I did. Make sure you go on that side so you get fogged out. I can't reach as far as you, apparently. Well, you did pretty good. It's emptying. Yeah. Our friend Bill is here. He's helping spread it where we can't. He's got the, the ad job. And Tim's dumping over the edge. Makes me nervous, but hey.
Bill, you're doing great work. I really appreciate it. Could not figure out a machine in our entire collection to do that. So I just got Bill. Snowblower? I, I don't have one. Snowblower would have been great. Okay, I'm gonna try to get that mat out of there. I'm hoping this is the furthest one I had. I don't know, this is uh, they're pretty much buried in here. Oh look, that was pretty easy to pick up. I don't know if I can just turn loose of it. I can't really compact this down here where it's mud, but at least I can level it out. So, I sure do hope that was the first one, otherwise I've got to go back in there and try to dig up one. I didn't see another one. Now we put ropes on these for this exact reason. We didn't get strong enough ropes. I think I brought ropes that were rated for 370 pounds or something like that. Oh, there he's got it. I go. Man, it gets mud off of this thing and everything else. That was well. It wasn't dangerous, I guess, but it was an exciting ride. Rope number two. Uh, it came out through the knot, so that didn't work either. We're 0 for two on the ropes. which I know I can't lift full of mud since my compactor is already a thousand pounds. Got all the mats out. Let's smooth this up a little bit. I was going to put some more bentonite down in here. I'm not sure how to get out there. I might just throw it out there with a shovel. I've learned a trick here to clean off at least part of the bottom of my uh, compactor here. So the the head of the of the coupler pin came off, and it I mean it's well it was welded on, and it and it came off. Now I had hit it uh, some to try to get it in. You, you, well, you saw me hitting it with a wrench. Uh, earlier. Um, so we're under the gun here for time today. So check out my bungee cord solution. I hope you can see it there. I've got the bungee attached to the linchpin uh, holding holding the linchpin which is kind of trying to keep the main pin in. When I get just a little bit of time I'm gonna have to weld a new head of some sort on the overall I don't know, the overall holding coupler pin there. Folks, we really need you to press that like button and subscribe to our channel. Um, it, it helps the analytics dramatically. I, I guess I was sort of in denial of that and thought it really probably didn't make much difference, and so I haven't I haven't really pushed that over the years, but, but it, it seems to, to be more important than ever, so I, I really would appreciate it. I, I've said all along I'm not fond of asking for that, but hey, we got to have it. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You know, we're under deadlines. We've talked about the weather deadlines, but we're under a bigger deadline right now. Yeah, Katrina's coming home in just a couple hours, actually. And not only that, she's bringing her future mother-in-law with her. We're going wedding dress shopping. That's exciting. It is exciting. I don't know if we'd really mentioned it, but Katrina is getting married. Uh, next next summer. Well, you met him on this channel. He helped fix our front landscaping. Yep, we did a landscaping video with us. I think that's the only video he's been in, but uh, his So mom, far. Yep, you guys are gonna go shopping. We're gonna spend your money. 
And I would just as soon not be along for that. Yeah, we don't want you. We're all done. I'm spreading out all of this um, bentonite. bentonite. Now we have several bags left, but I don't know where else to put it. We've we've incorporated it really good. I think the tilling is has just worked fabulous. I've got more tamping to do over there. Now that I was able to fish these out, I'm pretty sure I can fish the ones out on the other side. This will pretty well take care of what we're going to do inside the pond this fall. If you're interested, leave a comment if you're interested. We could do a live stream where we take a, some Q&As on what we have in store for the future as well as you know why we didn't do this or why we chose to do this. We do have more, more plans. Uh, we do have a plan on how to fill it and keep it full, but that'll have to wait. Hydraulic leak to fix, pen to fix. There's always something to fix. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He reached down to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud, and He set my feet on a rock, making my footsteps firm. So this is Izzy. Izzy almost got ran over by Tim on the tractor. Izzy's not very smart. That doggone Messick's tune, I can hear it. <laughs> Did you hear Messick's? Yes.